All right, we're going to do some uh, limits that go to infinity, and we're going to do some one-sided limits that uh, you can't use your normal five methods for. And then we're going to finish up with the three-step test for continuity, so adding to our, our knowledge of limits. So here's uh, the first type of question that you see, and it's um, some limits where it's actually going towards infinity here. So you see it's going towards infinity. So what's this going to look like? Well, um, there's a long way and a short way. And the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the largest degree that you see right here. And curiously, we'll divide everything by the largest degree. And this is going to, uh, in essence, make it look more complicated. Um, but it's going to make it possible to see the answer by just plugging in infinity. Um, so I'm going to plug, I'm going to divide everything by x because the largest degree that I see is 1x, so I'm going to divide everything by x. And I'm kind of kind of reduce each part as we go. And we're going to get this. And now I'm going to plug in infinity. Now you don't have to write this part, you just have to think it, but I'm just going to write, you know, hey, I'm thinking that this is something over infinity. I'm thinking that this is now something over infinity. And I, I hope you see where this is going. If you take and divide 2 by a really, really, really large number, this part right here is going to get closer and closer to 0. I mean, just picture 2 over a billion, over a trillion. It's really, really close to 0 already. Here's you know, 1 over infinity. This also getting really, really close to, um, really, really close to 0. So the only parts that are left are this parts right here. Um, which is negative 5 over 3. Remember I told you this was the, the long version. Uh, the short version is to look back and see that we have the same degree and realize that my answer is just residing right here. All right, that's the short version. If the degree's the same, your answer is going to be right here. This should be like something that you did before when you memorized the location of horizontal asymptotes. Um, that's right, a horizontal asymptote. And that's because limits at infinity are the exact same thing as horizontal asymptotes. You can kind of picture this thing right here kind of leveling off at negative 5 thirds. So here's like negative 5 thirds. And then as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, it's just leveling off at negative 5 thirds. When the degrees are the same, it's just going to be those coefficients right there. Or you could use this, this uh, slower method if you'd like. I'm going to use this slower method on this one. I'm going to divide everything by x to the fourth. And I'm going to reduce as we go, because it'll just make it look a little nicer if we reduce. So here, um, I'm going to divide everything by x to the fifth. Wow, this one's a little more complicated. So x to the fourth over x to the fifth will be 5 over x. So I'm just reducing as I go. This one will be 2 over x to the fifth, dividing by the largest degree we have, which is x to the fifth. This one's going to be 3. This one's going to be minus 3 over x squared. And then this one's going to be 5 over um, x to the fifth. And you can see when you plug in, I'm not going to write this intermediate step out this time. You can see that um, as I plug in infinity, this is going to get closer and closer to 0. This is going to get closer and closer to 0. Just picture something big being in this fraction. I mean really big. This will get closer and closer to zero, and so will this. All of these places went closer and closer to zero. Um, so that's going to be zero on the top and just three on the bottom. And hey, that's going to be just just zero. Now, from your knowledge of horizontal asymptotes, when you were in pre-cal and in algebra two, you should remember that if the degree on the bottom is larger, that the horizontal asymptote will be at zero. So if you'd like to just skip all the work and just realize that the answer is going to be zero right off the get-go, you can. Um, that brings us to the, the most curious case, and that's when the degree is bigger on the top. So I'm going to try our method here, and you're going to see it's going to result in um, something curious happening. We we'll really have to think about what's going to happen here. Our largest degree is x cubed, so I'll divide by x cubed. And I'm going to simplify as I go. And if I plug in 0 everywhere, you're going to get 0 in these locations, right, where the red arrows are. 
but that's going to give you negative 5 over 0. When you get negative 5 over 0, that means this thing doesn't go towards a number. It actually just goes either upwards, like this, it either goes upwards, or it's going to go downwards. Right? It's going to go towards positive infinity or negative infinity. You might remember from when you took Algebra 2 and Pre-Cal that the degree is bigger, it didn't have a horizontal asymptote, and that's because at the ends it's just going up towards infinity or down towards infinity. But which one? How do you know which one it's actually doing? Well, if you just look at the largest degree in the top and the largest degree in the bottom, and just you know it's either infinity or negative infinity, if you just consider the signs. If I plug in a positive infinity here in this part on the top, it's going to come out negative. And if you plug in positive infinity in the bottom, it's going to come out positive. So that means it's going to be negative over positive. That's going to be negative, and so my answer is negative infinity. Hey, if the degree on top is bigger, your answer will either be negative infinity or positive infinity. You should be able to just analyze the signs and tell which one it is. Okay, so this is how you do limits as they go to infinity. They really are something you've had before. They're the same rules for horizontal asymptotes. And you have a new technique that you can use um, if you would like. Let's try this. We're going to do some limits where there's a little plus sign here and a little minus sign, but none of our techniques work. So, you know, we can roll through our techniques. We can't plug it in because it's zero on the bottom. There's nothing to factor. There's no square root, so conjugate makes no sense. There's not a fraction inside our fraction, so LSD, uh, LCD doesn't work. And then the last one is expand, and there's nothing to expand. And that's because this thing right down here is an asymptote. Right? If there's, if there's no way to cancel it, then that means it must not cancel. And that three on the bottom is, is not a whole at all. It's, a, it's an asymptote. There's an easy way once you've discovered it's an asymptote to do this, and that's to plug in some number just barely, and I mean just barely, to the right of three. So here's my number line, and I'm thinking of a number just barely to the right because it's a little plus sign, and that's going to be like 3.0000000. Some ju number just barely to the right. And believe it or not, we're just going to kind of plug this in up here. It's going to be like what we did yesterday, believe it or not. Here's negative 1 over, and then if I plug in 3.000001 minus 3 into this bottom part, I get a positive tiny number. And you could pick something even closer. You could pick like 12 more zeros, and it would be even tinier. You can see that that's a negative number divided by a really, really, really small positive number, and that's going to come out negative infinity. As expected, if it's an asymptote, you know, you w would think that this thing, as you approach, is going to go towards either infinity or negative infinity, and we've discovered that on the left hand, or the right hand side, it's going towards negative infinity. Excuse this first one, right, because I did the right hand side. The left hand side is going to be much the same. Um, I'm just going to pick this time, um, just informally, I'm going to pick the number over here. So this would be 2.999999999. You can pick as many nines as you want. And this will be negative 1. And then when you plug in 2.999999999 minus 3, you're going to get a negative tiny number. That's a negative over negative, and that's positive infinity. And the last one is the two-sided limit, and since one came out negative infinity and one came out positive infinity, um, then we'd like to say that this one does not exist, right? So uh, now I have had people, they go, oh, I just love this tiny method. I can just see what my limits are right away. Remember, you can only use this method if it's an asymptote, and none of your other methods will work. Let's try two more here. I've got this one. It's a little trickier because this number is negative, and that's the reason I'm doing this one. This number is negative. I have had people in the past, and by people I might mean you, that have had trouble picking a number to the left and to the right um, when the number is negative. If you draw a number line and picture it, that may really assist you to make sure that you get the right one. To the left of this is 
negative 4.00000001, right? If you pick to the left. So that's the one that we want. And so now I'm just going to plug it in. Now on the top, I can just plug in negative 4. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7, right? And on the bottom, I get negative 4.00000001 plus 4. That's going to be negative tiny. And that's negative divided by negative. So that's positive infinity. So you see how this works. Now, don't be fooled. Like sometimes it's not this kind of problem, right? So you just start, if you see this little plus sign and you start plugging it in on this one, you'll miss it because this isn't that kind of problem at all. And you should look at it and say, of course it's not. It's a factoring problem. So let's do this and remember that our normal line of defense is to try our other methods first. And here, you know, if you factor this, you get x plus 5 right here and x minus 5. And then, lo and behold, our x plus 5s cancel. And we're left with the limit as x goes to um, a negative 5. And you should be thinking, oh, it's not an asymptote at all. You know, it's a hole in this graph right there. And I've got, let's see, 1 over um, x minus 5. And now I can just plug in negative 5, which is going to give us negative 1 tenth. Right, so this is negative one tenth. Yep, so very easy. That brings us to the end of one-sided limits. So limits that end up possibly as infinity for an answer. And then that brings us to the last thing, which is our three-step test for continuity. The three-step test for continuity. It turns out there's only really three different kinds of discontinuities. I'm gonna make pictures of these. These may need to make it in your notes. And these three things really are the three-step test um, for if a function is continuous or not. So I'm gonna draw a little picture here, and here's the first picture of a function being discontinuous. So I'm gonna call this f. And notice it's discontinuous at c. This is f. So I could ask you, well, why is this uh, discontinuous? And you might say, just informally, and you would be right, well, because it has a hole in the graph. But if I asked you to, hey, you know, use mathematical terms, you wouldn't say it, it, um, it has a hole in the graph. You would say because something doesn't exist, right? This little part right here doesn't exist. And that little part is f of c. If I try to plug in c, there's, no, there's a hole right there. It doesn't exist. So you like to say that f of c uh, does not exist. And that's the formal reason that it's got uh, discontinuity. It's the formal reason we have to pick up our pencil because, hey, right there, that point doesn't exist, f of c. So there's discontinuity number one. Here is discontinuity number two. And you can see it's going to be for a different reason. Now you can see that I'm going to make it exist this time, so it can't be the same reason. And then I'm going to make it like this. And informally, if I asked you you know, why this is not continuous, you might say, well, it's got a jump in here. It's got a, a discontinuity in there. But mathematically, we like to say that something doesn't exist. And what is that thing that doesn't exist? Well, if you trace from both sides, they're not heading towards the same number. So I'm hoping you're thinking that the limit doesn't exist. The limit as x approaches c of this f of x, you know, if this is f, doesn't exist. Right, so this right here does not exist. And that brings us to the last one. And notice I'm going to make it so that the first one doesn't apply because it's got like a little solid dot right there. So that one doesn't apply. And then I'm going to make it so the second one doesn't apply because you can see I've made it so the limit exists. From both sides, it's tracing. So we need a third reason for this. And you can see the reason is that this hole is not in this little spot right there. The hole, we like to say, is f of c. That's this little solid dot right there. And the fact that when you trace it from both sides, it's not heading towards the same thing, we like to say f of c is not the same as the limit. Right? Those go to two different things. Here's f of c. The limit is headed towards something else. This is our three-step test for continuity in picture form. 
laying it out so it's not in picture form is this. So here's the three-step formal test for continuity that you, you'll use. This has been on the AP exam many, many times, probably about two out of three years to make you show this test. So here's the three-step test is does f of c exist? This is testing, hey, does your graph look like step like one? If it doesn't pass step one, you don't have to do step two and step three. Step two, does the limit as x approaches c of your f of x exist? Right, so this is step two, does that exist? And the last one, so this is does it look like step two? If it passes step one and passes step two, we will apply our, our third test and that is, does f of c equal the limit as x approaches c of f of x? So this is the three-step test uh, for if a function is continuous. And I'll show you a couple of examples where we apply this test. I will tell you that the notation is picky. Okay, so here is example number one. So we want to know, is this continuous? at negative one. And we want to use the three-step formal test um, to show our work. Now, informally, we've kind of seen how to do it by plugging in negative one and kind of looking at what it looks like. But now we're going to use the formal test. So our first step is we want to know does, and we're testing at negative one, we want to know, so here's, let's put step one. Step one. Let's see, does like this f of negative one exist. So you're looking, hey, do I have a place to plug this in? And the answer is yes, because here's your equal to portion. Now, if this little equal to portion was missing, it would fail step one and you would know the answer, it's not continuous and you wouldn't have to do step two and step three. But it does exist. Got this like little equal to portion right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in negative one into this bottom portion. I'm gonna show which one I'm unplugging in it into by writing down negative one squared plus three times negative one plus five. And this will actually help you not make a mistake when you add them together. This is gonna be one minus three plus five. That's six minus three and that looks like three. So, hey, does it pass step one? Yes, we had a place to plug it in and we ended up getting three. So let's do step two from our three-step test. Does the limit exist? Now, there's a particular way you have to show your work for this, and that's you have to do the limit as x approaches negative one of your f of x from both sides. So I'll first do from the right, and then second, I will do it from the left. Now, from the right, it's gonna get closer and closer to the solid dot. We already plugged it into this solid dot, and we found out it was three. So I'll just use my, my past work, and I'll just say, hey, this one from the right-hand side, I know comes out three, because I did it before. And then from the left, we're gonna get closer and closer to this open hole. You can see it right here. And so I'll plug in a negative one into this one, and I'll get two times negative one plus three or plus six, just anticipating what it comes out to. And that's gonna be negative two plus six, and sadly, this is four. These two things are not the same. It has failed step two, the limit does not exist. It looks like graph number two with a jump discontinuity in it. And so I am now not going to do step three. Now on your test or quiz, there'll probably be like a a blank for step three and you'll just put nothing and then you'll write your conclusion and your conclusion will be like a conclusion blank and you'll say f of x is not continuous or discontinuous whichever you like better not continuous at x is equal to negative one now notice there's a lot of notation to this your limit from both sides must be shown just like this. You have to show f of negative one. You can't just write down three. And your conclusion has to look exactly like this. So very, very picky in what the work will actually look like. So make sure that your work looks, um, looks just like this. 
Okay, let's try another one. And let's do this one. Okay, so here we're gonna do the three-step test again. This will be my last one, then you'll get to try um, some problems at home. Now, first of all, notice that this one is named g of x. This is a picky thing, but we can't use f when it's clearly named g. So here is step one. In step one, we're looking for the equal to portion, and I see it, the equal to portion is right there, so it's gonna pass step one as soon as I plug it in. I'm gonna write g of negative one. And when I plug in negative one, I get three times negative one plus four, and that works out to one. All right, so hey, it passed to step one, it came out a number. Now remember, if this whole part was missing, you would have nowhere to plug that in. It would not pass step one. You would go g of negative one doesn't exist. You would skip step two, skip step three, and you go right to the conclusion and tell me that it's discontinuous because it didn't pass step one. Okay, let's try step two. So be the same as what we did before. So this is just, you know, repeating history. You know, it's the same thing. It's gonna be the limit as x goes to negative one. And then from the right, of my g of x, make sure your work looks exactly like this. The notation is important. If you don't have the proper notation, I will of course take off. And one of these is guaranteed, guaranteed to be on your test um, next week on Wednesday. So it looks like this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in negative one in two locations. From the right, we're plugging it in here. So nice and carefully, that's gonna be negative cosine of, and I'm plugging in negative one. So that's negative pi. And negative pi is in the same location as pi. It's right here. And that's going to be negative 1 comma 0. So the cosine of negative pi is negative 1, but with a negative 1 in front of it, that's positive 1. So the limit from the right-hand side is positive 1. Now we're going to do the left-hand side. This one's easier to plug in. So let's see, I've got negative and then negative one squared plus two, and that equals one. Hey, the limit exists because these two are the same. Now, oftentimes students will think, yeah, but it equals this one as well. Yep, but that's step three. That's what you're gonna do in step three, is you're gonna say, okay, 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 I see what happened here. The thing that I got in step one, which was the closed dot, g of negative one, is in exactly the same place as my two-sided limit and of g of x. And those both came out one. Yes, they did. And so I can draw in my conclusion that what you have here is a continuous function. So I'm gonna say g of x, that's the name of the function, is continuous at x equals negative one. Okay, there is your three-step test in all its glory. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. You should be able to do your homework with ease. The three-step test is the hardest thing on here, but it's not very hard. It's very like formulaic and you do the same thing each and every time. Please watch your notation and make sure your notation is just right. Uh, good luck.